So this behind the image, we're talking about the photograph of, it's a dark landscape and there are railroad tracks going away from it. When you're shooting a shot like this, how do you decide between landscape and portrait? Because that was the vertical versus the horizontal that you chose. Yeah, I mean, I thought the, the, the rail line or something on the cloud, and I was wondering about that. I did take a couple of horizontal shots mm -hmm. of it, actually. But there's also a, um, a radio mast on the right of frame, mm -hmm. and I kind of like that element, you know, different different lines within the frame, and it, it seemed to work much better as a portrait shot, mm -hmm. you know, vertical shot. That was a funny day, that, because I think it was the end of a day's filming and we'd been we'd been on the other side of um, where that shot's taken um, filming on a reservation towards Grants, I think it was and at the end of the day we had finished a shot and these thunderstorms had come in and uh, we'd done a shot of them police car, I think, running across the landscape, and we'd wrapped. And, and I knew this spot, so as I was driving home, I was chasing a thunderstorm, thinking about, you know, get the lightning and the clouds and all that. And then I, and I thought about this spot, which is a bridge off the freeway um, that's like a back road into uh, Albuquerque. And um, so I just stopped on the bridge and looked to see if that uh, see what the sky was like. And I just saw that because it was the, the sun was setting in, in the far distance of the rail lines, so you've got this wonderful mm. kick off the line and everything else was so dark, you know, it was just a, I thought it was a wonderful image. But yeah, I say that was after the end of the day shooting. So was it the, the kick off the metal of the railroad tracks that drew yeah, you to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just because yeah. it, well, you just have it because you have that line of light and that far distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they say the radio mask because it just these ang the lines within the frame. I thought were really interesting. And how dark was it there? It's a pretty dark photograph, but did you open it up, stop it down? I mean, it's pretty dark. Yeah. I mean, you know, how do you say where the exposure is compared with when you're standing out looking at it? Yeah. I mean, it was getting dark, so it was, mm -hmm. you know, it was the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I think the time I got back to Albuquerque, was, well, I think it was about an hour out of Albuquerque. So it was more or less night when I got home. And offhand, how would you say the orientation of a photo changes the content, you know, horizontal or vertical? I rarely do vertical shots. Mm -hmm. and I don't know why. I just kind of, you know, I'm very staid in the photographs I do, it's very much about, you know, the same format and horizontal. I mean, that's what I usually do, but there are some like that, and that's a shot of a rainbow over a, a graveyard that's vertical and a couple of others. The you know, one we're going to do after this is also vertical, but we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah, no, sometimes it, it's just right, you know. Well, when you go landscape, don't you... Can't you basically put more in the frame, more elements? Because if you're on a beach, you can put more people in it. While if you were vertical, it would be yeah, more yeah, but more sky, well, yeah, but, 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 but this this shot so much about that that V of the rail line mm -hmm. into the distance mm -hmm. that the horizontal frame didn't accentuate that, but the vertical frame did. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like the radio mast almost like emphasize the verticality of the image, you know, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, I did look at them both because I did, I always want to go horizontal for some reason. And I also, it's a landscape and you think landscape's horizontal. And yeah. some people, you know, we shoot a movie and you go, you know, two, three, nine, you do wide, widescreen format, you know, because it's about a landscape. But in this case, it just felt right. The other way. Mm -hmm. And of course, people are always taught the use of um, different shapes in um, a photograph, and they do 
are taught that triangle is the best way to get the deep depth in the um, picture and the railroad tracks are basically well. Yeah, it's all about perspective, yeah, isn't it? Right. I mean, again, you go back to the... And I know you thought about that with the show. Right? You go back to the <laughs> golden frame or perspective within a frame to lead the eye and mm -hmm. all this. But, I mean, yeah, you really you are sitting there with your lens looking like, I've got to think about the golden mean and what the... <laughs> Yeah, sure. I can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's really interesting to to learn all these things and you know read about them and whatever. But when it comes to a photograph, isn't it just your instinctive reaction to something that you see? Just go for it. You know. Learn the rules and then. Don't think about them again because they're probably instilled in you too. I mean, that's what. I yeah, well, they are. But it's like everything else, isn't it? You you look at paintings or other photographers' work or other movies and stuff, and you're not copying it, but they're all there in your brain, and they almost mm -hmm. they almost they all must kind of go around like a soup, mixing mm -hmm. up. And when you see something, somehow all those elements are reacting, and you sort of see something in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not to say looking at my favourite Edward Munch painting has it any more influence in my head than the sunset I saw out in the boat a few weeks ago. You know what I mean? It's like they're all just things that sit there. And, yeah. You know. Well, I, I I do think they they do have an influence, and that's why I think if you take the time. To look at the sunset, to look, to walk in a room and think, oh wow, I really <clears> like the way that corner's arranged. Why, you, you know, to to see those things, I think that helps you later when you're trying to take a picture like that. Well, absolutely, you know, I, yeah. I think everything. Yeah, That's you, what if I'm you're saying, interested right? in images, you're always doing that. You're always looking at things, and you mm -hmm. know, everything you see influences how you see. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Exactly. So on this one, were you hoping a train might come? Because no. that would have changed the picture. No, I don't know if one came or not. I did take Which a lot of photographs trains. of trains. <laughs> I did photograph a lot of trains in New Mexico because I, I would go around, you know, a number of evenings. I'd spend an hour before I come back, or I, well, the weekend I go around, and there's always trains. You know, those endless mile long trains. And they're really interesting, but I never got a photograph I really like. Mm. And, you know, they're not like the trains in Jesse James. They don't have steam <laughs> coming out of their funnel. <laughs> they're not like that. You know, they're just big, solid <laughs> diesel engines with no smoke. Uh, but it, I'm sure in your head, it's a better image. And then when you come down to see them, mm, not so good. Yeah, no. <laughs> Some I forget who took it. That was a wonderful photograph. The train with all the boxcars and they're all different colors, and and you kind of yeah, it would be great if you ever saw one. Yeah, but I never saw trains one. Really yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the photographer had them painted specially for the shop. I don't know. I've never seen a train. Before. <laughs>